A lot of you really seem to enjoy that tier list video I made for the Stick World Legacy spells, and I've been receiving requests to do a tier list on all of the units in Stick War. Uh, initially, it was Stick War 2, but I decided to expand further and do a tier list on every single unit in Stick Empires. So here we are. A long, grueling task of editing ahead of me. But this is going to be a tier list on all the units in Stick Empires. So to kick this off, I'm just going to throw Order Miners, Chaos Miners, and Chompers in S tier. I don't, I don't really have anything to say, anything bad to say about them. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses. But to rank any of these Miners lower than an S, I don't see a reason for it. Like I said, it's not like there's anything super special about them. So yeah, all three miners are going to go into the S tier. So I guess we'll go in order in terms of the Order Empire, and we're going to kick things off with Sword Wrath. So here we go, the Stick Empire's Sword Wrath. They are pretty good, but they aren't as powerful as the Stick World Legacy or Stick War 3 Sword Wrath. For one, they don't have a jump attack. The jump attack doesn't exist in Stick Empires. But that doesn't mean you should count them out. In terms of damage and price, they're pretty good for what they can do. But these guys are extremely vulnerable to pretty much everything. Bombers, spellcasters, a lot of them can destroy swords very easily. And Another thing that happens to cripple them is their soul ability, Rage. Rage and Stick Empires will subtract a small portion of the Sword Wrath's health every time you use it. So it serves as a double-edged sword because you want to enrage your swords to get some worth out of them. But if the ability that you're trying to use to empower your swords is also taking health away from those swords, you know, it kind of removes their potential, it kind of tarnishes their power a little bit. But again, they still are pretty decent. Now, they are, they serve their, they serve their role well in this game, to be an early to mid game unit. It's not like Stick War 3 where you can Sword Wrath spam and win a game off of that. Trying to Sword Wrath spam and Stick Empires, that's actually extremely hard. Considering there's no mass heal, there's no projectile barrier, no snow squall, to help them out. If you want to run a group of Sword Wrath in to cause damage to an opponent's economy, you're gonna need a tank for it. You can't really just pull that off like you can pull that off in Stick War 3. But overall, I would say the Stick Empire Sword Wrath is good, but they do have a lot of weaknesses. And if you're not careful with your Sword Wrath, all it takes is a couple of small slip-ups to have your entire Sword Wrath army completely obliterated. So for the Sword Wrath, I think it's good giving them a B tier. I think A is a little bit too much for the Stick Empire Sword Wrath because for them to be A tier, for them to be A tier in my opinion, if Rage was if Rage didn't take away their health, then that would give them A tier because then Rage would become so much more viable, it would become so much more powerful, and you're not just taxing the health in your source consistently just to make them stronger. But all that, given their strengths and their weaknesses, I think B tier is fair for that. So let's move on to the Archidon. <laughs> all right so up next on the list we have the archidon and i think that the archidon is the strongest unit for the entire order empire they are the cheapest range unit in the entire game that have the lowest population cost in the entire game they have super long range they train fast and they have extremely good kiting potential when you need a unit that can come out quickly and can do severe damage in large numbers. Well, technically, all ranged unit types in large numbers are lethal, but I think that Archidons are the most powerful ranged unit type in large numbers. 
and a large reason for that is their low population cost. They only cost two population. So you can mass more Archidons than you can any other ranged unit type in Stick Empires. Albatross are four pop, Deads and Wings are both three population, Fires and Airs are both three population. So when it comes to a full range unit mass, Archidons can outnumber every other range unit type. If we're talking massing from 0 to 80 pop, Archidons will outnumber them. They can also outrange Fires, Airs, Wings, and Albatross to a certain degree. I really do think that the Archidon is the strongest unit for order. Now that doesn't mean that they don't have their own weaknesses. I would say one of the biggest weaknesses for the Archidon is being able to out tank their damage output and order giants are a perfect way to do this. When you have four maxed out giants like this, Archidons can't really break through that, especially when they're backed up with units like the Magi Kill. So there are, you know, it's not just that. There are plenty of other methods to corner Archidons and ruin their power. You know, you can use Magi Kill if you're Chaos, you got Marrows and Medusas, you got Bombers. Basically, if you manage to corner an army of Archidons, then you pretty much defeated them because it's the spacing that allows them to unlock their full potential, especially if you give them the maximum possible space to kite. Even with their weakness of being massively out tanked as well as, you know, spell casters and things like that, I still think that their strengths far outweigh their weaknesses. So that's why I'm going to put the Archidon at an S tier. I think that they are well deserving of that. It's so easy to set up an Archer Mass and it has the potential to be extremely deadly, especially when combined with Merix, which is the unit we're going to talk about next. Alright, so we have Merix up next and I don't have a whole lot to say about the Merix except they're pretty solid. You know, for the biggest thing being they don't need some ridiculous freaking bubble shield to be good. In many small fights like this one, having one or two Merricks makes a huge difference. They're very good at saving units that are about to die. As you can clearly see there, that Archidon that took fire arrow damage was able to stay alive with the fact that there were two Merricks there. Having a unit dedicated to just healing and curing is great, and with their decent amount of health, they're able to tank a decent amount of damage for a while. You know, they still need tanks in order for them to be effective, but they're good in all situations. They're extremely important in Order versus Chaos where they're constantly dealing with poison. But there's so many instances where a Merrick can just clutch out with healing and curing units, preventing them from dying. Like I said, not a lot to say about the Merrick other than the fact that they are pretty solid. You just gotta make sure that you desync your Merricks because if they are in sync, then they will that will greatly reduce the amount of healing power that they can put out. But like I said, not a lot to say about Merricks other than they're good. So I am going to give the Merrick an S tier. I feel like they are well deserving of that. They are extremely important. They are very good for the role that they play for the Order Empire, especially when it comes to healing and protecting units like Archidons, which are vulnerable to many things. Merricks are good, so I think an S tier is fair. Alright, now let's talk about a bad boy, an absolute powerhouse of destruction. When you train this old man, you better watch out because his mission is to destroy all. We're talking about the Magi Kill. Magi Kill and Stick Empires, I feel like, are incredible. Way better than the Magi Kill you are used to seeing in like Stick World Legacy, Stick World 1 games like that. What makes this version of a Magi Kill so unique is there's no minion summoning to worry about. These Magi Kill are all about using damage dealing spells to just destroy their opponents. With their long range poison spray, their extremely hot explosion blast, and their electrifying electric wall really bad at describing things. 
all this all the spells for the magic kill are solid and these guys are extremely good when it comes to playing defensive for order when you're in a tight spot and you need to come back remember archidons when i talked about them earlier this is one of the best counters to archidon spam because they are extremely vulnerable to the magi kills power and it's if you don't time your dodging right you can get hit by the magi kill poison spray and suffer a lot of damage from it especially back in version 1.69 of stick empires that's when Magic Kill were at their prime. They were freaking deadly. I'm sure you saw the videos that I made featuring them. When you poisoned an Archidon, you killed that Archidon in like four hits of that poison. And you could one hit kill them with a blast. And even now, when they got nerfed to where they weren't able to do that, they were still extremely strong. So here we go, we're gonna take this old man and we're gonna put him in an S tier because I think that's he's well deserving of that. Now of course they have their own weaknesses, they're slow, they're very vulnerable to things like Shinobi, Marokai, Reap, Medusa Stone, you know, things like that. But they are still extremely strong. When you train a Magi kill, you are going to get good results from it if you're able to use him correctly. All right, here we go. Now we're talking about Spear Tins. I think Spear Tins are extremely solid. Being a tanky unit with a really high attack speed and surprisingly high damage output, it makes them really good, especially in order versus order where they can be super freaking offensive. Being able to take down units like Archidons, if you have even, if you have at least three Spear Tins, you can take out a Merrick or a Magi Kill very quickly. Their damage is just that good. And even against, you know, even against heavier units like Deads, having three Spear Tins, you can pick off Deads pretty easily. Their high attack speed, high damage output, and their tanking ability, especially with Shield Wall, I think makes Spear Tins solid. One of the best also one of the best unit types for order. Of course, when it comes to their Juggernaut counterparts, they're not able to auto health region like Jugs can. So they have to rely on Merricks or going into Garrison to be able to heal all of that lost health in a fight. But, it, just think if Spiritage did have that ability, oh my god, they would be even more ridiculous. So check this out. This is another example of having a high number of spear tins being so incredibly good at taking out crucial units. And again, I really do think it's due to their fast attack speed. It is one simple quick animation that allows you to accomplish so much with it. That's why in order versus order, spear tins can, they can tend to be more offensive than defensive in certain situations. But when you need them to be defensive, they're pretty strong with their shield wall ability being able to allow them to take 40% less damage. 40% is pretty freaking high, so essentially, essentially you're giving them a bigger health bar. Like, you know, talking hypothetically. You're giving them a bigger health bar. Of course, you don't allow them to move anymore, but even when they're stationary, not able to move, their sole ability is to tank, and they excel in that when you put a spirit in and shield wall you're actually able to survive a medusa stone you can't say that about a, a lot of about a lot of other units like the jug that get gets insta killed if you manage the shield wall you will survive the medusa stone and you'll even be unaffected by the marokai reap although back in the day you could literally reap a spirit in and shield wall and they would literally just glide across the ground it was the funniest thing ever so there we go, Spiritans S tier. S stands for Spiritans, Spiritans stand for S tier. So, wow, that was a horrible joke. That that worked out a lot better in my head. But anyway, Spiritans S tier, they deserve it. Now we have the Shadow Wrath. The Shadow Wrath is also really solid, but I'm actually not gonna be giving these guys an, a, an S tier. I think they're more deserving of an A tier. Now, when you look at their strengths, they are by far the fastest unit in the game. 
The only unit that can match the speed of the Shadow Rat is the Crawler, but they have to have pack mentality. When you give Crawlers pack mentality, they will have the same speed as a Shadow Rat, but if we're talking just natural speed, Shadow Rats are by far the fastest in the entire game. So there's that going for them. Their damage output is pretty good. They can actually kill an Archidon in three hits as opposed to a Spearton that takes four hits. So they do more damage than Spearton's. And then their Magnum Opus, their strongest ability that makes them so good is the Shinobi. Whether you get Cloak 1 or Cloak 2, it's good. These guys can mow down a lot of things, as you can see right here. Able to Shinobi and insta-kill three archers. Although, to be fair, Shinobi 1 will kill an archer, Don. You don't need Shinobi 2 to kill an archer. 1 is more than enough to do the job. But here we go. Here's why I'm giving them an A tier. Their cost and their population. They cost 450 gold, 150 mana, and they take up 4 population. So you can't get a huge number of these ninjas. And also, they aren't very good at tanking, and that's fair, given that they have the role of an assassin. It's not to be a humongous tank that can just tank a lot of damage. So, when you lose a Shadow Wrath, it kind of costs you. And they can be pretty hard to control, given how fast they are. Freaking Mini Sonic the Hedgehogs out here with their freaking speed. But, it's their population and their price that makes me give them an A tier as opposed to an S tier. Like when you when you build ninjas, you can't really have a whole lot on the field at a time because that kind of starts to cause problems for you. Although in the past, oh my god, back when ninja massing was a thing. Ninja massing <laughs> I don't even want to talk about ninja massing and stick empires. It was it was so unbelievably ridiculous. I think it's fair putting these guys in the A tier. So there we go. I finally start putting things in S tier after like a billion units. And now we're gonna talk about the albatross. Now these guys, I'm gonna put them in the B tier. At first I was thinking C tier, but then again I'd be doing them an injustice by putting them in C tier because. They're good, but they do have a lot of problems. Now, the biggest problem with Albatross is the amount of resources that are required to get them going. They cost 450 gold and 200 mana. I think they are the most expensive range unit in the game if we're not counting the Enslaved Giant. I also believe they take 24 seconds to train, which I think is the longest training time out of any range unit and they have the highest population cost of all the range units of four population again if we are excluding enslaved giants so all of that combined with the fact that they are slow and while they are tanky they're not as tanky as something like a dead albatross can hold their own for just like a little bit of time like long enough for hey i don't have a spearton yet but i have a spearton running up to you know to tank so my albatross can hold off for like two seconds and then i need that spear to be in the front line because as you can see here albatross can get bullied especially by the archidon which trains way faster costs way cheaper in both gold cost and population have a much longer range and can mass a lot faster so when it comes to choosing between archidons and albos to mass majority of players are going to choose Archidons because they are just they're just better especially when it comes to them being in sheer numbers Albatross just get absolutely destroyed and then when they have to retreat you have to have something that will soak up damage for them and allow them to get away or they're pretty much doomed now while all those disadvantages may seem bad if everything is in place for Albatross to allow them to set up they they're deadly they have an extremely high damage output against tanky units they're able to absolutely shred them when they're in really high numbers especially with their signature ability blazing bolts that allows them to do 
continuous amounts of fire damage. When they're in high numbers and they they have tanks to constantly support them in spacing, I personally think Albatross are extremely deadly. And like I said, they're able to tank on their own for a short period of time. So when they're backed up by Merricks, they turn out to be even better. If you play your cards right and you know what you're doing when you're building Albatross, it is possible to win with these units. It's just majority of players aren't going to do that when you have Archidons available. And here we go. The final unit for the Order Empire, we have the Enslaved Giant. And I don't really have anything bad to say about these guys because these, these guys are deadly. When Stake War 2 first came out and I first learned about Enslaved Giants, I was surprised that they made the Enslaved Giant a ranged unit because the amount of damage that these guys can do is crazy. And it's not like they have a short range. Their range is pretty decent given the fact that they're giants. They're able to zone out just so many different things. A good example being Chaos Turrets. Unlike Chaos Giants that actually have to run in close to do damage, Enslaved Giants can just sit from far away and just continuously shred things by throwing endless amounts of boulders at them. So you have something that can tank very well, do a lot of damage, and is very deadly in numbers when massed. If the opponent managed to get out like three max enslaved giants and you still haven't found a solution to take them out, then you it was pretty much game over, especially since they could be combined with units like Magi Kill and Shadow Wrath. You know, mixing a Magi Kill in with Enslaved Giant spam, it, it basically becomes good luck killing that unless you have something that can deal with it. With that being said, Order Giants, I'm going to put them... You know what? I think, I think they're worthy of an S tier. Like I said, the fact that they're ranged and they can still do a lot of damage, they're able to safely zone out a lot of you know high damaging units that can destroy them and when massed in large numbers they're deadly given the fact that they're ranged and they're mega tanks so yeah I think S tier is good alright so we're chugging along we are now making the transition to the Chaos Empire units and we're going to kick things off with crawlers crawlers are decent they're pretty pretty good they're cheap they come out really fast and they're powerful in a pack as stated in their unit description but what makes them super good is their fast attack animations that allow them to animation cancel that's what makes crawlers so deadly in the early game when you animation cancel a crawler you do your damage you escape quickly and since crawlers have health regen you can run around, you can outrun the opposing player's Sword Wrath or whatever's fighting against them while regaining health. Then you can run back in, pick off whatever weak unit your opponent has, and kabam, you basically outnumber them after that. And so that's what makes them so good, and especially in the OVC stage. When it comes to fighting against early game swords or archer starts, crawlers Crawlers perform that job pretty well, especially when you give them their two abilities, Pack Mentality and Predatory Edge. When they get these two abilities, when you give them Pack Mentality, they become as fast as Shadow Wrath, and when they get Predatory Edge, they get a huge damage increase that allows them to exterminate pretty much anything in their path if they're in high enough numbers. Even against high numbers of Archidons, they can close the gap you know, they can close the gap a lot faster and destroy them, as you plainly saw right there. Just took out three Archidons before they were able to retreat behind the wall. Okay, so uh, credits to Ace Player for this clip. This is from one of his old tournaments back in the day, but this showcases the main weakness of Crawlers. Just like Sword Rat, they need tanks to be effective, and if you get too cocky with your Crawlers, then against high numbers of Archidons, you can end up losing them all. And once you lose all of your Crawlers, it's pretty much pointless trying to spam them again because it, at that point, it just becomes too late. You're better off getting units like Juggernauts 
for the rest of the match as opposed to trying to set up another crawler spam. All right, let's slap these bad boys onto the tier list. I'm going to be giving crawlers a B tier along with the Sword Wrath. When it comes to early game power, they're great. They have some decent mid game power, but they kind of get destroyed along with swords in the mid game if both players are going very ranged unit heavy. If you want to carry crawlers over to late game, you need to have you need to be able to permanently tank for them while setting up the spam. And Chaos Giants are, you know, a good way to set that up. And then they're also deadly when used with Marokai because you can reap something, then send in the crawlers to annihilate it, and then just retreat behind your tanks. But crawlers are good. Fast speed, animation canceling potential, things like that. But those weaknesses are why I put it in the B tier. Alright, now we're talking about some tanky sons of guns. The Toxic Dead for the Chaos Empire. These guys are ridiculous. Now, when I first played Stick War 2 and I came across the dead level, oh my god, did I hate those deads. I was like, in what universe did it make sense to create a tanky range unit that can poison? This is what that would make, that's what makes deads solid. They are perfect when it comes to playing safe and playing defensive, especially against orders archidons which are faster can mass quicker and can actually be pretty nightmares the deads if you wouldn't believe but they're able to hold off on their own much better than albatross can so their ability to poison is good but some of their major weaknesses is against light units they have terrible damage output and that's true in stick war 3 in stick empires i think deads can do bonus damage or their attacks ignore armor, I think is what the term was. But against lighter units like archers, swords, merics, they kind of do a crappy job in, you know, severely damaging them. It's the poison that does the work. Now, when it comes to when it comes to losing too many units of any ranged unit type, it's a risk. But I think deads carry the biggest risk of all when it comes to losing too many numbers of them because they're slow okay when it comes to them trying to get away they kind of can't so you're forced to hold your ground and just hope that they stalled long enough for you to rebuild because if you don't have a backup plan after losing a huge number of your deads you basically lose the entire game all right let's throw these guys on the tier list i'm going to be giving toxic deads an a tier i don't think I wouldn't say they're worthy of S because of how much of a risk it is to try and use those guys. They're slow, they don't have a very strong damage output against light units, and if you lose them all, if you don't have a backup plan, you pretty much lose the game. But when you needed something that's tanky and can hold on its own for a while, Toxic Deads will get the job done for you. Up next, we have the Marokai, and the Marokai is getting a straight up S tier. The Marokai is freaking busted, and who was better to show me how busted he was than 75G? I played Stick Empire's challenges with him all the time. I personally think that he is the best Marokai user there is. No one is better at showing how deadly the Marokai is than him. Do you remember how in Pokemon, Ash always talked about how much he wanted to be a Pokemon Master? Well, if you went and asked him the same thing, what did he want to be, I guarantee he would tell you that he wanted to be a Marokai Master. I wanna be the very best, like no one ever was. The Marokai is extremely good. We're talking 12 second reaps. 12 seconds, that's how long it takes for the reap to cool down. 12 seconds, it has insanely long range and you can reap literally anything you want and it will always come forward with the exception of a Spiritune and Shield Wall or the Treacher from the Elementals. And then the Hellfist, which can just shear through a line of units it can just shear through and destroy almost everything in its path, especially when you're stacking it. And it also has a long range. The Marokai is extremely good for Chaos. 
one of the best offensive spell casters in the game, I would say. And they're even pretty good at playing defensively, I would say. At least when it comes to playing against those who were using Cycloids against Chaos. And uh, EVC, it's common for most players to run Cycloids to try and like destroy wings. Well, you can use Marokai to put a stop to that by reaping the Cycloids and then Elfisting them. Marokai is good. Marokai is definitely getting an S tier. Alright, so, like I said, S tier for the Marokai. I really think he deserves it. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and take the Queen of Chaos, Medusa herself, and I'm going to also put her in the S tier. I don't even need to explain why. Uh, Medusa herself actually wants to tell you, so... I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let the Queen of Chaos step forward and tell you why she deserves to be in the S tier. So go ahead, take it away, Medusa. I need that Venom Flux right, right in the front here. Come on, Venom Flux. Chaos Empire has some really. Oh, good you Venom! Oh, you Venom Flux over the wall. I wasn't seeing that one coming. I don't think Chaos Empire Eight even saw that one coming. That one is is super worth. Okay, so let's kill two birds with one stone and rank the last two units of Chaos on the tier list together. We got Eclipsers and Chaos Giants, and they are both good. Eclipsers don't have any special abilities, but that doesn't mean they're not strong. You know, they're pretty much as basic as a flying range unit gets. They're pretty much just like Archidons. They look just like Archidons, and when they're both in their default skins, they just took an Archidon, threw some wings on it, and that you know, they have the exact same reloading animation and everything. I think it's pretty neat. But anyway, Eclipsers are good. They got a decent speed, they have auto heal and cure that allows them to escape uh, intense situations and save themselves from dying to things like poison and burn damage. They are actually slightly faster than Archidons and units that share the same speed as Archidons, so they have, they're very good at picking things off that are exposed at the top of the map. Very good at sniping, they can mass in pretty quick numbers, and they only take out three populations, so you can get a decent number of wings. So overall, Eclipsers, Eclipsers are good. They're, I would say they're a lot more offensive than Deads, which are more defensive. And then the Chaos Giant. I'm gonna also get, I'm gonna put the Chaos Giant at an S tier along with Eclipser. Eclipse is also getting S tier, by the way. Now you may think I'm crazy for that, because World Chaos Giants are slow, their attack animations are slow, and their melee units, so that may seem bad for them, well, I think they make up for it with their unbelievable ability to just tank nothing but mean amounts of punishment. Now, the health of Enslaved Giants and Chaos Giants seem similar. I do think the Chaos Giant has a bit more health than the Enslaved Giant. I'm not sure why, but it, I really do feel like the Chaos Giant has more health, and when you have multiple Chaos Giants, they become a wall of armored strength, and it's so hard to break through a bunch of Chaos Giants. Like, having at least three backed up with Eclipser or Dead Mass and Spellcasters Good luck breaking that. It's so ridiculous. So sure, Chaos Giants are slow. They have slow attack animations. You can dodge their attacks half the time. And they may seem bumbling and slow and stuff. But the amount of health that they have when they're maxed out, I think more than makes up for it. Alright, so here we go. S tier and S tier. I feel they deserve it. So, we are finally down to the last empire, the Elemental Empire. And I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. I'm, I, like, in real time with me making this video, without even editing it, it's been well over two hours. 
of me making this video non non-stop two hours. So I'm gonna be speeding through this last bit because I'm getting tired. So anyway, let's do let's start with the Elemental Empire. Alright, we are almost done. Now we are going to tier list the units of the Elemental Empire beginning with the Earth. And Earths are they're not bad. They're, they can actually be pretty lethal in the early game with their basic attack that causes a short stun. If you get three or more Earths attacking in a certain sequence, as you can see, they will be able to stun lock an enemy target. Now, this stun lock is hard to pull off considering, you, again, you have to have at least three Earth Elementals to pull this off. And on top of that, the attacks can be dodged, especially by fast units like crawlers so it's not very easy to pull off but once you manage to do it you can as far as their health goes you know it's it's a pretty decent amount of health only slightly higher than the sorbat i believe so it's nothing special earth elementals you know they're okay can you really mask them like you can sorbat or crawlers you could would they be as effective Probably not. So, really, they're just meant to be early game damage dealers. And their signature, allowing them to transform into miners. So, nothing really, nothing a lot to say about the Earth Elemental. So, yeah. So, I am going to put the Earth Elementals at a comfortable B tier. They're pretty much on the same level as Crawlers and Swordwrath, just being basic units for the early to mid game that don't have any super special abilities, but they do have their own strengths that allow them to sit comfortably at the B tier. Up next on the list, we have the Water Elemental, and the Water Elemental is a pretty decent unit. They're pretty cheap, they're really fast, and they accomplish their main goal, which is to run out a unit and freeze it. They are the unit that does absolutely no damage whatsoever, but they are still lethal with their ability to run at an enemy unit and completely freeze it to where it can't do anything. And they are also the source of healing for the Elemental Empire, of course, besides garrisoning. Now, their ability, which is called Sacrificial Mass Heal, is pretty... It's, it's not bad, but if you research the ability from the castle that apparently is supposed to let you strengthen the amount of health that Water Elementals give upon dying, it actually kind of doesn't work anymore because it got nerfed. When Elementals first came out, you can buy the Sacrificial Mass Heal and use it on a Chirag that's damn near dead and you will completely heal it to full health. I'm not kidding. Like you know how mass heal and stick War 3 is broken? Cause because, because it heals light units to full health that gives so much health over a short period of time. That's what the water elementals upgraded mass heal used to do. But then they nerfed it and now it's kind of garbage. You could buy the mass heal from the castle and it would have like you would not get any difference. It would be the same effect. It would be a complete waste of gold and mana. But overall, they're good as a unit, although it is a little bit weird having them as the main source of healing for the Elemental Empire. Essentially, it's like a Merrick you can buy for 350 gold, but in order to heal and cure, it has to die. So it's kind of, you know, think of bombers, you know, but when bombers blow up, they damage things, you know? So you get worth out of that. But in this case, you're buying a 350 gold unit, and in order for it to heal and cure, it has to die. Now, it's not really that taxing for an elemental player, and, you know, most players aren't doing what you see here, which is spamming a billion waters and running into free stuff. They're just using a couple of water elementals to freeze crucial units like Magi, Kill, or Marokai so they can target them with Chirags later. Or they're using one to two waters at a time to continuously heal and cure their units. So overall, I would say the water elemental is a pretty decent unit. 
All right, so tier list time. I'm going to put Water Elementals on an A tier. I don't think they're worthy of an S, but I do think they are worthy of an A. They're pretty decent for what they can do, although, you know, they can't do any damage whatsoever to enemy units, so you can't just build a single water elemental and then rush something and expect it to work. You're going to have to bring other units up with that water elemental to be able to do any good with it. Alright, now we have the fire elemental. Fire elementals, I'm going to actually put at a B tier. And the reason why is these guys are really expensive. They cost 450 gold. And they get massively outranged by deads, archidons, wings. I'm pretty sure like almost every range unit in this game can outrange a fire except for maybe the air. I think airs and fires have the same range, though airs may have a slightly larger range. Even still, fires have a very short range and against a unit that is speedy like them, like the archidon, as you can see, it causes massive problems because fires can get so easily zoned out by a huge sheer count of Archidons or any other ranged unit. So if you have something that can get severely outranged, you're not going to be able to get much out of it. I mean, heck, take Toxic Deaths from Stickhorn 3. They're a perfect example. They can get outranged by a lot of units and... If, there's, if you can't think of a good solution to work around that, then you're kind of screwed, to be honest. I mean, just look at this part. Severely outranged by Archidons. There's just no contest. So, the fire, you know, fires are good. They do decent damage. They have decent health. But the fact that they can get so easily outranged and half the time their projectiles won't even hit when you're trying to forward kite or G-kite due to how slow and lumbering they are, that kind of makes fires a little low on the tier list, which is why I'm giving them a B tier. Okay, I am tired right now. I am really tired. So I'm going to just speed this up massively by covering a lot of units at this part. Air Elementals, I'm going to put them at a B tier. They are really good for picking out units. Like, if you single target a unit, you will guarantee hit it due to their unique way of targeting units. They, you know, it's they have a direct targeting uh, system basically. <sighs> Next, we have Chirogs. I'm gonna put Chirogs in an A tier. They're definitely meant to be highly offensive units, given the fact that Elementals don't have any form of a giant besides their Tower Spawn two. So, besides that, they're super high health and burn damage capabilities. You know, it definitely proves that they are meant to be offensive tanks, even more offensive than Juggernauts. Now, their burrow ability is decent, it's kind of like a knockoff Shadow Ass Shinobi. Um, and of course, the glitch existed where you could jump repeatedly and murder literally everything that gets hit by the constant jumping attacks. But. Besides that, there's not really much to say about Chirag, so I'd say they're worthy of an A tier. While we're at it, we'll go ahead and tier list the Cycloid. I think Cycloids are worthy of an A tier as well. They are pretty expensive, requiring an air and a water to make the combination, but their protect ability allows even a water elemental to be extremely tanky, and their tornado ability is literally the worst enemy for Archidons. It's really freaking good, the tornado ability. And there was also a glitch where you could double cast it. And that kind of sucked for Archidons because if they get hit with two tornadoes, they're dead. They are gone. So, next on the list will be Infernos. Infernos, I'm actually going to give a C tier. Now, why a C tier? Number one, they require a fire and an air to be combined to make that spellcaster. You were sacrificing two extremely expensive ranged units to get this unit. And don't get me wrong, their abilities are good, but they're extremely slow casting. Their prior their main ability, the vast alloys, whatever you freaking call this thing, does good damage, but it can be so easily dodged. 
you know, the most it can do is catch a player off guard when it's used. But they'll realize it's coming and they will dodge out of the way. And then their secondary ability, it's supposed to work kind of like the Medusa Poison Pool, where anything that comes across it receives massive burn damage and can, and can potentially be annihilated. So here you're going to see an example of the Meteor Shower doing its job. It's It works like the Medusa Poison Pool. Anything that crosses over those meteors will receive an insane amount of burn damage to the point where they will get obliterated. There's a very low chance that the unit that crosses over these meteors will survive. But here's my problem with it. Number one, it doesn't last that... Well, actually I'm wrong. It lasts for, it lasts for a decent amount of time. It shouldn't last as long as like Medusa Poison Pool because that will make it broken. The biggest problem with it is when, you know, you have to research it in order to get the burn damage addition. It doesn't do burn damage on its own. Without researching this ability from the castle, when you cast the Meteor Shower, it'll just be like light raindrops hitting units. It'll just tickle them. Like, imagine having the Magi Kill Blast, but you have to research the burn damage from the castle. You see where that's really ineffective there? The fact that you have to research the burn damage for the Meteor Shower, for the Infernos for it to work. It's kind of like, well, why give them the base ability in the first place if you have to research the burn damage to make it better? So that combined with the fact that it takes a very long time to cast its two spells. I mean a very long time. I think it takes the longest amount of time to cast its spells out of any spellcaster in the game. That's why I'm going to give the Infernos a C tier. They're good, but majority of the time, it's going to be pretty hard pulling off their spells unless you're in a super offensive situation where you can constantly keep your opponent at bay with meteor, you know, constant meteor showers. And now for the final unit to close out this long tier list, we have the V, the leader of the elementals. He gets an S tier. He's good. He's got teleportation that literally takes seven seconds to recharge. He can create clones that you can upgrade to do more damage and control your will, and he can possess any unit that you want. There's really nothing else to say other than V, solid unit, S tier. So let's finally end this. All right, let's put this thing to bed. Fires, I said B tier, airs, B tier, Chirogs, A tier, Cycloids, A tier, Infernos, I said it was going to C tier, V, I said it was going to S tier, and I forgot the Treacher, but I am so tired right now that I flat out just do not care about finding any game footage showing this Treacher, okay? I hate the Treacher. Um, in all my years of playing Stick Empires where I constantly lost a tree spam, I came to hate the Treacher, okay? It's like the damn Stick World Legacy match I kill in Stick Empires, where you get to spawn three freaking scorpions that can poison, and the damn trees themselves are tanky, and they have that stupid root ability that is extremely long, has a ridiculously busted range that can literally two hit a damn Archidon. I absolutely hate the Treacher, and I want to rank them. I want to rank them at a uh, the lowest tier possible, which in this case is a D tier. I didn't feel like creating an F2 when I made this tier list. But in terms of effectiveness, I don't think that they're that good anyway. So I'm doing it. I'm popping the Treacher and the little Scorpion piece of crap at a C tier. And the reason why is trees take up a lot of population. I mean, they take a lot of population. And rightfully so, given how ridiculously powerful they are. But that... I'm still going to give them a C tier because in, in reality, they're not really that effective. They only seem to be effective because of the fact that they can endlessly create scorpions. So not endlessly, they create three at a time, but you can park the trees far away as hell and it will seem like you're facing endless waves of scorpions. There we go. It is done. Every single unit and stick empires has been successfully presented on a tier list. We are finally done. 
here it is take a look let it sink in take a picture of it write an essay about it what do whatever you want with this freaking tier list because i am done making this video i'm saying that but i have to edit it but i am not doing it right now i'm going to bed i am finishing this video and it is 11 o'clock p.m at this point in time that i finish this tier list it is 11 o'clock at night so that will be all for this video i hope you guys enjoyed hit that subscribe button like the video things like that and i'll see you in the next one